and just like Obama's continuing it, it's the same agenda. The presidents, the parties change, the agenda stays the same. One world government, collectivism, that's it. And then they, you think that you really have a choice, like Burger King, McDonald's, you know, AT&T, Verizon, you know, these duopolies. While the little guy who wants to just not be part of that Borg, that, 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 that system, it, it, that when real, really the small business owner is where is where all the jobs are the real small business owner they want to get rid of that as employment uh, continues to, to unemployment continues to rise the small business owner is, is forget about it you, he, they don't have the resources to start their own business these people they'll try maybe but but they don't they have to work for these larger corporations that'll hire them for for much less than they're really worth absolutely true happening every day so the more they collectivize in these larger corporations that have hundreds and thousands of employees um, they can afford to hire them at a lower rate because you really can't you need a job you gotta work nobody's gonna be able to afford the rents nobody's gonna be able to afford the the, the overhead for a business and that's what's gonna happen so it's a continuous process that's been going on since the end of World War II since the Rockefellers donated the land for the United Nations, since NATO has been dropping love bombs, you know, since Eisenhower warned us of the military industrial complex, it's just increased to, it's just out of control. And it has to stop. We just have to stop spending money on the wars. We've got to stop spending money on these insane wars. And we got to stop this, 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 this. <laughs> if you see something, say something. You got to realize the government is doing nine tenths of the of the terrorism in the world. The governments of countries, England, America, same thing. MI6, MI5, boom, CIA, all cut from the same cloth. I mean, literally, they do drills, and then the drills. Uh, turn into be real events at the time of the drills. They did it, and we did it, and you're saying that's a coincidence with 9-11? That they were doing the same exact drill at the same time it happened? And the same thing with London? Oh, they must have had inside information. You know, See, that's everyone's just so easy to, to accept the, 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 the response that are given, the, the, these lies. And you start digging through the things, you'll find out the truth. And it's just, it's just amazing that all the people that really know things about 9-11 a good portion of them that heard explosions like Barry Jennings, they're dead. You know, a whole bunch of people. Uh, it's terrible. You know, they, they, they went on the record, the people that are, they know what happened. They heard explosions. They saw people uh, being, being, uh, being burned in the, and they're saying that it was jet fuel in the, in, the, uh, in the lobby. Come on, use your brain, people. Physics? Come on. Flame doesn't go down. Because it was a shaft. And, you know, like they'll tell you, they, you're being shafted all right if you buy that story. You got 1,600 ar uh, architects and engineers for 9/11 Truth that say it's impossible. The whole story is a fraud. It is. Just get away from your belief system. Have some obje objectivity. Realize that um, you're really being told what to think. Basically, and they're telling you what to think, and you're either going to think on the right way of it, or the left way of it. Or maybe you're in the middle somewhere. The division tactic. Keeping the eye off the prize, which is your liberty. And they want it. And they want it bad. They want to take everything you have, and they want you dead. And they want you to basically work you to death. The Nazi philosophy is really what they're looking for. Pretty much work you to death. As they slowly kill you with big pharma drugs and GMO foods, sterilize you after three generations. Just keep going. Just keep going. Anyway, so what we have now is a, co a consortium composed of Corrections Corporation of America, the GEO Group, and the Management Training Corporation that owns over 200 prisons and makes a profit close to $5 billion a year. Profit $5 billion. Now, the Cabal's global gr drug crimes... The current global drug syndicate was brought to its present height of worker destruction by George H.W. Bush when he was de facto president under Reagan during his term as president. The drug syndicate had mushroomed under both Bill Clinton and Bush too and continues under the Obama con man. <laughs> 
I love this article. This is written by a Hermes Press. It's on. It's a Hermes Press. You got to read them. They're great. Uh, on March 30th, 1981, President Reagan was shot and gravely wounded as he was leaving the Washington Hilton Hotel after addressing a labor convention. Reagan was the man who stood in the way of Vice President George W. Bush becoming president. For the remainder of Reagan's term, Bush was the de facto president. The would-be assassin was uh, John W. Hinckley, who had strange ties to the Bush family. Hinckley was found not guilty by reason of insanity on June 21st, 1982, and later placed in a minimum security mental facility. On November 13th, 1986, the Reagan administration confirmed that a flood of worldwide reports that it was indeed someone that sent uh, Iran weapons uh, again during the uh, Iran-Contra scandal, and then after invoking the Fifth Amendment, we know that uh, Ali North was, of course, a criminal who is now has his own show on the Military Channel. It's great. This is America. You know, to make heroes of criminals and then demonize these people that you stereotype as criminals because of maybe uh, they make a few mistakes or maybe they, they, their lifestyle isn't what you would agree with or what I should say is what society would agree with. Now, if marijuana was legal, like alcohol is legal, I mean, you're going to think of somebody different because they smoke and it's legal. Did you think about somebody as a criminal when they, or as as a d degenerate loser, drug druggy, whatever, during prohibition, if they drank and it was illegal to drink? I mean, don't you see how they're just controlling our minds? This is all mind control, uh, emphasized again through uh, programs that you can research, such as Project Monarch and and Project uh, Mockingbird, which uh, is is a detailed accounts of uh, infiltration and um, basically coercion of the media to get their points across, I mean, they messed up. I mean, they're giving, for example, on 9-11, uh, the intel was put out that Building 7 collapsed about a half an hour before it actually did. So they missed their timing because things are off in different time zones and it's very complicated. And some of these guys are literally, you know, it's just, it's just that was another one of those. They're just clowns. There's so many mess-ups and they just cover them up by like smiling and just saying, you know, you know, outrageous conspiracy. Bush saying, I'll, you know, don't don't stand for any outrageous conspiracy theories. I mean, please, come on. So you're talking about something like 9/11, the building falling and the and the intelligence getting out 30 minutes before it actually happened. Same thing happened with Kennedy. They already had a whole black cover story of Kennedy being uh, assassinated before it actually could have happened. Uh, if, uh, that that's on record um, as well uh, in in Alaska where the time zones were, were, were off and they already had it hit the press through their little black story. So you know things were different back then. It wasn't like the the world wasn't connected by a, a thread like what it is now with the internet. And I'm speaking to people across the world right now, anywhere. Um, so we know if something were to happen, we could get that information instantly. It wasn't like that on November twenty second, nineteen sixty three. It really wasn't. I mean, let's be real. I mean, they were still sending telegrams. It, it's really unbelievable. So, you got to understand the drug trade is controlled by the CIA, and it is a mafia type operation. Absolutely, no doubt. And they infiltrate the government by getting their minions in place or the people that'll that'll work for them or they get their elected officials that'll put the agenda through and through compartmentalization they execute the the operations so many of Eric Holder's people of course didn't know but Eric Holder knew of course he knew first of all he's on record that he knew so you gotta understand we're dealing with a very very you gotta change your belief system this is not you know, we, I, I, I love my country more than anything, and that's the only reason why I'm doing this, is because it is under, we are at war with these evil forces who, have, who are out to bankrupt us, destroy us, and literally poison us and murder us and kill us. And I know this is hard to take, especially if some of you listening, um, you know, are, are either skeptical or, um, you know, just think I'm a nut. I, I'm not. And... It is all truth. Now, it is, I have been told by a couple of people we are changed, especially Jim Russell, who's the co founder, that, you know, maybe I'm just giving too much information too quickly, but I mean, my brain works this way. 
I work off of a couple of notes um, just to make sure that I stay on point but basically we're articles but basically that 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 is it our our entire society is controlled by what we see what we hear and we choose what we're going to um, accept as our you know we like this or we like that but really it's limited choice I mean look at the presidents you get these limited choices I mean you know this guy this kid that did a, a speech at the federal down in the Federal Reserve it's all over the YouTube it's going viral I mean this kid was like 24 years old he should be president he should he really should could he no it's like meet John Doe the movie by Frank Capra you know Gary Cooper should have been president at least what he was just a common average man he just wants everybody to just have a fair shake you know but of course again you know it's all this propaganda you know they want you to believe America is you know Gary Cooper and and you know John Wayne and Clint Eastwood and you know Rambo and you know and all of these these mythic characters or actors and and sort of emulate them and same thing with sports figures or uh, or music people same thing even bigger with music people are some people are you know literally like possessed by music I mean I know that I I, I find things I know about me, well, music itself and the music business is like just unbelievable I mean um, what we listen to and what we're given to listen to basically by the major record companies are, uh, are again all this part of this uh, pyramid of control and it is absolutely uh, not you know you don't really have a choice I mean that that's again just that's what it is I'm trying to explain in general we just really don't have a choice but they lead us to believe that we do by offering us you know a B and C maybe maybe you'll like you're lucky enough to get C in the middle but moving on, uh, so we know what happened with Ali North and all of that, but uh, it's interesting because during the presidency of uh, George Bush, you know, uh, he did a lot of criminal be behavior as well. It was the first Bush. You know, Bush had hired Manuel Noriega to be his man in Panama, and Noriega threatened to expose Bush's complicity in the gun running, so uh, they, they indicted him on drug smuggling charges <laughs> in 1988, if you remember. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff here is is going because of this connection to the uh, drug syndicate. Uh, we all know what happened. The uh, phony drug war. It's really a phony drug war. You can uh, see if uh, uh, Academy Award winning film was the Panama Deception in 1993. It's a foreign film. Uh, I think it was from uh, where was it? Um, yeah, it's a documentary video on Bush's terrorist attack against. Uh, against um, Noriega. Anyway, so Panama Deception. It's very good. Uh, it's produced by the Empowerment Project and narrated by Elizabeth Montgomery. Uh, it was in 1993. And on, uh, on January 4th, 1990, uh, Noriega was charged in a U.S. court in Miami with drug trafficking and sentenced to 40 years. Before 9-11, Noriega was the only war criminal in an American prison. So here we go. Now what happened after 1990? Wow, let's keep going. Well, we had all the problems with the fact that people were waking up about the government and the New World Order. You had Ruby Ridge. You had Waco. You had Oklahoma City. All uh, given one point of view from the media. 